Hey, yo, what's up guys? Baby Bear 4812 coming at you one more time. And today we're doing a Facebook problem. The problem is 426 convert binary search tree BST to a sorted, sorry, was that a sorted doubly linked list? Um, and just so you see the proof, I'm not lying to you, this one's been popular with Facebook. I think it's a good problem, I think it's a manageable one, but it's been one of their more popular ones recently, so I wanted to go over it anyways, just to make sure we, we really drill it home. Uh, just a reminder as always, if you have any requests, this one was a request as well, if you have any more requests, uh, my contact's in the description below, and feel free to reach out there and I'll, I'll get to it. So we're, we're told that we're, we're given a BST and we need to convert it to a circular doubly linked list in place. Um, I'll, I'll skip the rest of this, just I'll presume you guys read it. We want to do it in place, meaning that, uh, so the pointers should basically be rearranged, but we're going to be using the exact same references in memory to each individual node. Right, so just as a reminder, nodes are just individual references in memory, and we can change their pointers around. So if I'm, I'm taking a, a node and I'm changing its dot left or dot right property, uh, once I shift them around, I'm just pointing to new addresses in memory. We will not be creating a new structure altogether, all right? That would be cheating. So we're, we're given this pretty simple example of uh, the tree labeled one, two, three, four, five, and they, they labeled it uh, kindly for us so we can see how it, it works out here in the, in the list itself. We can see that one, two, three, four, five is a standard doubly linked list, meaning that we point forwards and backwards. Um, however, it is also circular on top of that, meaning that the head will point to the tail and the tail will also point to the head. Um, I, I know they kind of said head here and then created a, a, a separate list, uh, at least just visually here. I'm going to be going ahead and referring to, to the starting node as the, the head, and this five will be the tail, um, just for, for simplicity of explanation, but do note that it will be circular. So you could argue that there is no head and tail, but I'm, I'm not really going to get into semantics over that. Um, so one thing I want to really make clear even right off the bat is let's before we even go ahead and draw and everything, let's um let's take a look at, at how this is labeled. We can see, I'm not sure why I zoomed out and in there. Um, we can see that the the starting position is is this node down here in the bottom left corner of the tree. Number two is this is its parent node, and then three is its right child. So right away, when we're given a, a tree problem, and, and you know, if you're kind of in the stage right now where you're developing your intuition on how to solve these problems, um, think about it this way. If I'm given a tree problem, more often than not, I'd say almost 100% of the time, if not 100% of the time, we will be doing some sort of traversal through this tree. There are typically two kinds of traversal of a tree. There is um, there is depth first search and there is breadth first search. We can do those both recursively and iteratively, but for now we'll just stick to the, the recursive solution. I think it's more intuitive. Um, when we get into DFS specifically, there are three different types and orders that we can do it in. We can do in order, pre-order, and post-order. In order means I will first look at my left uh, child, then myself, and then my right child. Uh, Pre-order is, I guess, uh, myself, and then left child, then right child. Post-order is left child, right child, then myself. What we need to note about this problem, the first thing we need to realize is what's the order that these items are being outputted in. The first item is the bottom left, and then it's the parent and then it's the right child of the parent. That screams in-order traversal. If we're going through the in-order traversal, we'll have to do a depth-first search. And so right off the bat, kind of for free, we get this piece of information that we need to do a depth-first search in-order traversal in order to create this thing. And once you get that, you kind of, you know, taking care of half the battle. Um, what, what we're gonna need to do is, you know, use a few, you know, pointers just to, to kind of line things up the way that we that we want them to and get maybe a bit creative in how we implement this. But overall, that's really all that we're gonna be doing. Um, I, I could go ahead and draw this out, and I'm, I think maybe I will, although I don't think it'll be, it'll be quite too uh, necessary. The drawing will be pretty simple. So I think how they had it labeled was four, five, and this was a two, and we had one and three. So somehow what I want to do is I want to say, let me start with this one. So let me, as I'm going through my depth first search, I will keep calling my left child, okay? And that will eventually take me down here. We're going to put a, a terminating condition. So remember in recursion, we've got two things we need. One is a, a terminal condition and the other is the recursive relationship. Our terminal condition will be the standard uh, if not node or if not root, just return nothing. Uh, so that'll basically end us at, at this point right over here. We're now sitting at this you know, at this, at this one over here. Um, what I'm going to need is I'm going to need some sort of head and tail pointer. You can call them first and last. I'm going to call them head and tail for what's going to be our linked list. So what we're going to do is we're going to initialize some sort of first and last or head and tail pointer. And I'm going to say if there is no head, then let's just, let's make it point right here. 
Okay, we're going to point that to one. Now, after that, that part of the recursive call is, is done, we're now going to be back looking at, at this node itself. What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to somehow say, let me take my previous tail. So if I didn't have a head, let me put it this way, if I didn't have a head or a tail, I will make my first node both the head and the tail. Now I'm going to be looking at two here. I ask myself, does two have a, or does our list have a tail already? It does, that tail is two. Okay, but we need to add something onto the tail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say tail.next equals current, and current will be two. Current.previous, or current. Sure, I'll call it previous for now, will be the old tail. Now I'm going to say this is my new tail. This is still going to be my head, but this is going to be my new tail. And I'm going to keep track of my tail as I go. I'm using the words next and previous here as if I'm you know, referring to the typical linked list node. However, I believe that in the instructions they told us that next would be the equivalent of saying right and, and previous would be the equivalent of saying left. So now when I'm, I'm in this call, I'm, my, my next dive down is going to be to my right child because we're doing that in order traversal. Now that I make it to my right child, I'm, I'm going to ask myself the same question. So I, my terminal condition is all good. We're not entering there. I ask myself, do I have a tail? Have I created some sort of tail pointer? Yes, I have. It exists. Okay. Therefore, that means whoops, I need to add on to my, pre, to my current tail. I need to add on to that list. So I will say my current tail dot right dot next, however you want to think about it is current three. I'll take my current and say dot previous or dot left is going to equal two. And that's it. And then I'm going to say this is no longer my tail. This is my tail right over here. Rinse and repeat. If you can get the logic for one or two of these steps, you've got the entire problem solved. Once you know, once this problem comes to an end, we're th this head and tail variable that I'm keeping will keep that kind of globally, so that when we jump out of our depth first search, I will be able to simply say, hey. You know, maybe we can ignore the four and the five for now. Pretend it doesn't exist. I'll say, hey, take my head dot previous and point it to my tail or dot right point to tail. Take my tail dot left and point it to the head. And that's how we make it circular. So that's going to be one step right at the end. I was able to say too. That's one step right at the end just to say, let me link these two together because I'll be keeping a head and a tail variable or a pointer globally. That, that we can do when we're completed with all of our, our standard DFS work. So that's really the only logic that, that goes into this. Um, at this point, I know that was a quick explanation given my usual like 20 to 30 minute videos, but I think we're good enough to just jump into the code. And of course, if you have any questions, you can, you can let me know down below. Um, I'll get into the complexities at the end. Um, and also, if there's a way to kind of make this uh, solution even more efficient. We're, we're given this standard definition for a, a node here. I'm gonna delete that because it's just vanilla. It's the usual stuff. Um, first thing I'm going to do is make sure that we don't have an, an empty input here. So I'll say if not root, we're just going to return nothing at all. Then, I'll make a bit more room, then we'll say the following. We're going to have to define some DFS function and it'll take some node and we'll, we'll see what we're going to do with it. Um, and then I said I'm, I need two variables. I need a head and a tail. I don't know what those will be yet, so I'm going to say head and tail are going to equal none for now. We'll, we'll, we'll leave them blank. I'm then going to need to make my DFS call and when we're going to make that call starting with the root. Um, and once we've done that, we said once we've completed that depth for search, we need to take our head and our tail and, and connect them together. So I'm going to say take head dot and right, so we're going from the head, we want to connect its previous, so left, head dot left is equal to a tail, and we're going to say tail dot right, a tail's next value is going to be the head. I think in my explanation, I may have said it backwards. If I did, excuse me, uh, this is how, this is how it's, it's going to work. And finally, the last thing we're going to want to return is the head. Uh, so the head we're going to create such that it points to this one, um, or the head The head will be a pointer that points yes to this to this space in memory one. Ignore this right over here. I think this looks a, a bit confusing. So don't don't confuse what I'm seeing in head here with uh, with this diagram right over here. They also did provide another diagram over here. I wouldn't. I found that confusing more than anything. So don't don't sweat that one if it didn't make any sense. Now, let's let's finish up our, our DFS function. Uh, again, with any, any kind of recursive function, we need to begin with a terminal condition. Our terminal condition uh, will be if not node, return, just jump out. There's nothing for me to do here. Then in, in general DFS, we've got, again, the, the, our, our pattern that, that we go with is uh, take uh, node.left, and then we'll look at our, our self, so you know, kind of self, and we're gonna need to put in a bit of logic there. And then finally, we're going to need to call uh, DFS node.write. All right, and that's all we're gonna do, almost. 
Uh, we're we're going to need to put some logic in here, obviously. And so I'm, I'm going to pull up my notes here just because I don't want to make a mistake and then have to backtrack on it. But what we what I did was as follows. Uh, be, uh, as we start, when, when we go do our first iteration, we don't have a tail or a head, right? So what I'll say is if we have a tail, we're going to put in some, some amount of logic. Otherwise, if we don't, we're going to need to initialize what our, our head and, and what our tail is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll say... Uh, I'll say pass so for now and then I'll fill it in in just a second and then what I'm going to do out here is is precisely what I was talking about here where I said once we connect everything that we need to connect let's take our, our tail pointer and move it over to say it's going to be the current node that I'm looking at the current node I'm looking at is node so I'm going to say tail is equal to node no matter what I do here I'm going to say uh, you know my new tail is is the current item that I'm looking at. That's the latest piece that I have added to the, the W linked list. Now, if we don't have a tail, so we're we're walking through for the first time, uh, well, then that means we also don't have a head, right? So I'm gonna say a head is equal to node. And if you think about why this is, and in our first walkthrough, we, we're, we're not gonna enter the sys statement, so we'll say head equals node. Once we jump out of this if else, we're then gonna set the tail equal to node anyway. So that's why I'm only setting the head here, and I'm not doing something like head equals node, tail equals node. Although this would be correct, it would be redundant. Now, if we do already have a tail, what are we going to want to do? If I do have a tail, let's say I have one here and I want to add on another item, I want to say uh, tail.right is equal to node. So tail.next, that's the equivalent logically is equal to node. And node.previous or node.left, since we're working with tree nodes, is equal to tail. And that's it. So I've, what I've done is I've gone through, I've connected these two items now. I've, I've gone as far left as I can. I'm looking at myself, I'm connecting my tail onto the list. I'm setting the tail to be the latest item that I just had. And then I'm going to my right subtree after that. Once we jump out of that, we're setting our head to connect to the tail and vice versa. And finally, we're returning the head. And I'm gonna run this very quickly just to make sure that it works. Uh, it doesn't, and the reason it doesn't is because local variable uh, tail reference before assignment. Cool, so what have I done wrong here? What I've done is I've used the global variable out here and tried to reference it inside this function over here. Now because of the scope and of how, excuse me, I'm speaking very quickly today, because of how spoken, spoken, <laughs> scoping works in, in Python, I need to use a, um, a, a non-local keyword here, uh, and that's going to give me access to, to the global variables head and tail, which still exists inside that parent function called treat to double list. And now if I run this, it should be all good. And cool. And there we go. So there, uh, or rather, the this time and space complexity for the solution will be, in a worst case scenario, it will be O of n. O of n time for sure, we're only looking at every node once. Space will be O of n in a worst case, where we need to, maybe we have a flat tree and we have to walk through every single item, and that space will be taken up by the call stack. The um, the average time complexity would just be log of n, because on average, if we have a balanced tree, we're only gonna have to go through a log base two of the, of the total number of nodes in the tree. All this to say, there's no way for us to optimize the complexities anymore. However, as a good follow-up to your solution when you're when you're in an interview, you could and probably should identify that there is a slight limitation to, to a solution like this. That limitation is the size of the call stack. So in Python, we max out at a, a call stack size of 997. The stack frames are pretty thick in Python. It's a very high-level language, whereas JavaScript is, is 10,000. I always say this, and I'm, I'm not sure about the, the other languages. They all have some sort of limit as well. Um, so what you could do is rewrite the solution in iterative form. And what that would do, again, is it's, uh, it wouldn't change your time or space complexity, but it would allow you to deal with potentially larger inputs. So when you've done your, so when you've done your solution, yeah, when you've explained it through to your interviewer, you could say that you could optimize, and if you were getting this ready for production, you could make an, an iterative depth for a search, which isn't too difficult at all. Um, you could do a quick Google search on that one. It'll, it'll take care of that for you. And, and that would simply allow you to deal with larger inputs than you can right now. And that's all I got to say on that topic. Um, any other questions, uh, let me know down below. My contact's also in the description. Let me know if you have any other requests. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. The channel's been growing. I've been super happy with it. And yeah, just I hope to keep getting more and more people on board and, and joining and contributing and, and helping each other out. So yeah, with that, I, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.